back, ladies and gentlemen, to the final video in this biochemistry unit. Our focus today is going to be on chemical reactions and enzymes. Now, in your body, chemical reactions are occurring constantly, and that is a part of your metabolism. Fortunately, you have enzymes, and those enzymes help speed up the process of that chemical reaction. Without enzymes, the chemical reactions would occur so slowly in your body that you could not survive. So I think it's imperative and very important that we talk about these topics and make sure you have a good understanding of them in this unit. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to understand how chemical reactions take place inside of the body. You'll be able to differentiate between different types and parts of a chemical reaction. And then you should also be able to evaluate the function of enzymes and the impact on cellular processes inside of the body. There are your vocab terms for this particular video. Make sure you keep those in mind. Make sure you have those handy. You will be needing them when we come back and talk about this topic next time in class. So as I mentioned before, the chemical reactions are constantly occurring inside of your body. Without them, you would not be able to survive. And they're occurring on a very, very small level, but there are so many of them that a lot of the energy that you expend on a daily basis is simply used to keep these chemical reactions going inside of your body. Now when we look at chemical reactions from a chemistry standpoint, we start with our reactants, which are to the left of the arrow here in the picture, and then our products are what we end with, and that is what is on the right side of the picture. So our reactants react, and that ends up forming our products, which is what we get at the end of our chemical reaction. Now there are two main types of chemical reactions we are going to look at in this class. The first one is known as an endothermic reaction and the second is an exothermic reaction. Endothermic reactions absorb energy from the environment and those feel cold, while an exothermic reaction releases energy. So an exothermic reaction would be something like if you've ever seen those little hand warmers before that you can get in the middle of winter and you kind of put it in your your, your glove and it kind of keeps your hands warm. You can do the same thing with your feet. You can get these things for your, your shoes. And there's a little disc in it and you break the disc and then it becomes very, very hot. That is an exothermic reaction. Or for example, if I, I don't know, take a log and douse it in gasoline and light it on fire. That is an exothermic reaction. It releases feet and releases feet. <laughs> I said releases feet. I'm keeping it in. It releases heat which then makes it feel hot. Endothermic reactions feel cold because they're absorbing energy from the environment. So reaction diagrams are really important because this shows the change in energy of a chemical reaction over time. So if I look here, I have a reaction diagram for an exothermic reaction and then one for an endothermic. And notice that the exothermic the energy is higher in the reactants than in the products. And that makes sense, right? Exothermic reactions release energy. So my reactants should have higher energy. Then when the reaction occurs, it releases energy, which means the energy in my product should be lower because the energy that was in the reactants was released to the environment. It's the exact opposite for an endothermic reaction. The reactants are going to have less energy than the products because the products absorb energy from the environment during the chemical reaction. So we start with our reactants lower and then our products end up higher. So notice that in these two reaction diagrams, in exothermic, the reactants are higher than the products because energy is released during the reaction. And with endothermic, the reactants are lower than the products because the products absorb energy from the environment. Now, Chemical reactions don't just happen spontaneously. A lot of times they need a, a bit of energy to happen. So for, I'll go back to the example of talking about lighting a log on fire. If I sit there and stare at a log, it's not just going to immediately catch on fire. It doesn't work that way. It needs a, a boost of energy. And that's what the gasoline and the match for, are for. And it's the same thing with the chemical reactions that occur inside of your body. And that amount of energy that's needed to kickstart that reaction is known as activation energy. It's the amount of energy required to make a chemical reaction take place. So here in this diagram, I have the reactants and the products. Hopefully you can see that this is an exothermic reaction because the energy is being released. But in order to get there, 
I have to add energy in. And that may be um, you know, adding energy in the form of ATP, which we'll talk about later, or if we're looking at, again, lighting that log on fire, that might be using a match to kickstart the chemical reaction. But regardless, nearly all chemical reactions require a little bit of extra energy to give it a, a kickstart, if you will, to be able to convert the reactants to the products. And that kickstart is known as activation energy. Now, that activation energy is, is a bit of a problem because inside of the body, energy can be difficult to obtain and difficult to use. And when we want to start a chemical reaction, that may require a lot of energy. So the body uses what are called enzymes, and enzymes are proteins. I'm going to have you guys write that down. That's the special question for the day. Proteins are blank. Okay. Keep in mind that proteins are enzymes, so make sure you write that down. That's very important. Enzymes are proteins that speed up chemical reactions by lowering the amount of that activation energy that's required. So if there's less energy that's required to start that reaction, that reaction will happen much faster and it will occur much more often. Keep in mind that this can speed up thousands of times or more. It can speed up that reaction to occur much, much faster than without the enzyme and thus allowing that reaction to occur more times. Now, enzymes are very specific as well. So one specific enzyme is used for one type of chemical reaction, but those enzymes can be reused over and over and over again. So this is probably one of the most important slides of the year. Enzymes speed up those reactions by lowering the amount of energy required, and it speeds them up thousands of times faster. And keep in mind that enzymes are specific. So one specific type of enzyme will only work for one type of chemical reaction. So how does an enzyme actually work? Well, an enzyme binds to the substrate. That's the term that we use to describe a reactant in a reaction that involves an enzyme. So basically, reactant and substrate kind of mean the same thing. When it chemically bonds to that active site, it forms what's called the enzyme-substrate complex. The enzyme stresses the chemical bond of the substrate, making it easier to break. The product then breaks away from the enzyme, and that enzyme can be reused over and over again. Now notice that the enzyme's active site is very, very specific. And that's because if you remember what I told you in the previous slide, that the enzyme is specific. It's only going to bind to one type of substrate. When it binds to it, it puts stress on that chemical bond and helps break that chemical bond and convert to products much, much easier. Now, if we add extra heat or we add acid or we do something to the enzyme where that active site changes shape, the enzyme will no longer function because the substrate doesn't fit into it anymore. Kind of think of it like a lock and a key. You have a lock and a key, and that key only fits into one specific lock in order to open the door. If the lock changes, the key no longer fits and the door cannot open. It's a very, very similar concept to how enzymes work in an enzyme-catalyzed reaction. So that's the basics of chemical reactions and enzymes, but keep in mind that chemical reactions are essential to life and are constantly occurring inside of your body. Enzymes make these reactions possible, otherwise they would occur too slowly and everything that you know would die. All life itself could not exist. Enzymes speed up reactions by lowering the activation energy required for the reaction to take place. Enzymes are specific to just one type of reaction, and they can be reused over and over and over again. Hopefully we met the objectives for this video. I hope you guys had a good time listening. We'll see you in our next unit, which is going to focus on cells and how those cells function. So have a great day, guys. We will